Please note that this video has spoilers for the subject. Put off by how long this video is, don't worry, I tend to jam-pack my videos with as much content, as many details as I possibly can, and I try to talk pretty fast, so while the video is a bit on the long side, I don't repeat myself, and I get into a lot of details about the subject that, you know, pretty much anything that I feel I can comment on and that I think you might find interesting. Next movie thoughts. I'm going to be completely obvious here and go with the first thing that comes to mind when one can talk spoilers about this movie. It has no ending. Plain and simple. It, it has no ending. The ending doesn't indicate that everything will work out fine. We don't, from them driving off into the distance, flipping off the audience the entire way and then cutting to black so that, you know, just to let you know, yeah, okay, you can get out of the theater seats now. No, 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 no money back. This, this is like one of the only movies I've ever seen where I would fully endorse someone in asking for their money back. Anyway, yeah, there's, there's nothing in that drive away to really insinuate that, or to, to let us know that everything's going to be fine. It's maybe insinuated, but we don't know for sure. I don't know if they were actually sequel baiting. That would be like my number one theory on it for, for actually choosing that as an end. But just for fun, here are a few others. Maybe they just wrote themselves into a corner and decided, you know what, let's just let everyone blow up. And they decided that might be a little bit of a downer ending, so they just said, okay, so rewind to the middle part of the film. That's actually, we only get half a film. The other half is just a dream sequence, basically. I guess something that it could also be is they just really didn't have anywhere to really go with this. You know, you'll notice that they don't really have a lot to present us with. We have no idea who the terrorists are, what their motives are, where they're even from, although they do make sure that all the accents are distinctly European. I noticed a lot of French especially because, you know, to Americans, all French are automatically bad people. <sighs> yeah, I suppose that pretty well covers the utter lack of an ending. How about uh, the, the fact that the climax, the only role for our protagonist is to tell them, you know, to, to tell this team, FBI team, I guess, where to go and occasionally stop and say, no, no, not yet, no, okay, now, and, and point, and, and that's it, you know, he doesn't fight at all, or anything, yeah, he's just this walking Deus Ex Machina, I guess. Also, where did he learn how to fight? I mean, in that, in, in that jailbreak, he seems... Yeah, not, not just seems, he's a capable fighter, he knows exactly how to, and don't just say that it's, oh, well, he can see the future, he knows exactly where to hit them. Yeah, just because you know exactly what you're supposed to do doesn't mean you're going to do it perfectly the first time. Yeah, period, end of argument. Now, the, you know, and, and at, at the beginning of the jailbreak, you know, first he asks for a smoke. And then he asks for a light, and then the guards laugh because they've seen Face Off, they know not to, you know, go along with that. And then he punches the guy, and I guess he needed a smoke for that. I, I, I gotta not do that for every unanswered question. If, if I shrug for every unanswered question that this movie raises, my neck is gonna go out. 
how do the terrorists know about Chris's ability, or at least that it actually, like, you know, works? How do they know that he's a threat? Why do they put so much effort into this entire... Actually, if they didn't bother with the whole thing with the, you know, getting Liz onto the thing, he wouldn't even have... I mean, would he even have been able to do anything in the entire last half of the movie? I mean, it seems like the only reason he can see it is because it's her, because with her he can see more of the future. Although I guess the ending implies that apparently he can without her. Yeah, this movie really just is not consistent with its logic at all. It's its own internal logic. And then the... Yeah, I, I love how when Liz points out the obvious, you know, well, if, if they, they... You know, well, why do they want you? Well, they, they think I can help them save a lot of people. Well, why don't you help them? Well, I usually I can't see more than two minutes in the future, but now you can. But they don't know that. Okay, so we're back to the question from before. Why don't you help them if you can? That was the argument you used. <sighs> the there, there's a distinct lack of tension regarding Chris because I mean, after a while of watching this, you just realize, well, he's always just ducking out of the way and moving in the exact way that he is supposed to, so nothing's gonna happen. And that's also very much something wrong with the climax. You know, again, he's just going around saying, okay, there's a guy up there, shoot him, we should go this way. You know, it's just... What is there to be excited about? I also really resent how this sort of almost brings up this thing of, you know, the government taking away freedom, supposedly to keep people safe. And then it's like, you know, oh, but they're gonna stop a nuclear device from being detonated in... I don't even remember what American city it was. That's, that's... I literally started recording this video within 10 minutes of the movie ending. And I've already forgotten that. Talk about not staying in the old memory banks for long. Anyway, some big American city. And yeah, because, you know, that actually happens in real life. I also really like how that, that, that has fairly little to do with you know, we have to take away freedom to protect, and, and you no, know, you, you need someone literally psychic. That's literally the only way that this movie could get solved as it is presented. So, yeah, it, it really doesn't even address that aspect at all, which, yeah, considering the short story, is really a massive letdown. I love, there, there are a couple of moments with Liz, it's when she's being confronted by Julianne Moore's character, and no, I've forgotten her name as well. When, when she first, like, confronts her, right, at, with, by, by the car, I think, and she says, I, I don't remember the full name, but she says, Elizabeth something. And, you know, she responds, yes, and you would think it'd be like, yes, what do you want? And, yes, that's my name, what do you want? But, but the way Beale plays it, and I don't know if this is intentional or if it's just, she's not the greatest actress in the world, but the way it comes off is like, yes, like, how did you know my name? And then when she, when, when Julianne Moore says her character's name, she, her, her eyes are like, you know your own name too? What else do you know? Who else, who, 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 
what other names do you know? Is I don't know. Just crack me up for some reason. She she looks very. She she has this deer caught in headlights kind of thing going for some of the latter half of the movie. I wasn't quite clear on why Chris needed to, you know, have Liz do the whole exploding, you know, she, she like drives the car, you know, jumps out of the car, lets the car drive into this water tower, it's get, it gets knocked over. Would he have been caught by the guys following him? Was he entirely sure that they were going to be safe? Because otherwise, it kind of throws that whole, he's empathetic kind of thing out the window. And then, I mean, the only thing that really comes of it is a, an action set piece, because that's the only way the movie can distract the audience from the plot holes. And that it gets Chris captured, because apparently he gets knocked out. I don't know if it was the tree trunk that landed right next to him, or the car that landed right above him, but apparently one of those two things knocked him out. You know, I, I would personally think that if he actually was hit by them, it would, you know, completely destroy his head by sheer force of, and, and the velocity and the whole thing, but what do I know? The... I love how we're supposed to care when, when Julianne Moore's, like, fellow agent gets killed by some guy, you know, it's like, oh no, not... Oh, did he even have a name? Who's... Was, he's been in like, he's had like maybe 15 minutes of screen time, are we supposed to know him, care about him at, at, at all, he's, okay. When the terrorists are talking to R Roy Ball or whatever it was, that, that sleazy guy who's also in, or oily guy, I guess is more appropriate, who's also in Con Air, anyway, the, the guy who trying to capture Chris in the casino. They, like, kneecap him before checking the area, you know, afterwards, like, oh, right, should, should, are there anyone? Oh, okay. Sure, it's nighttime, but it's still a parking lot. He, it could get spotted, you know, what? You know what would have made sense if they, like, knocked him out, quickly got him into a trunk, and then he wakes up, and then he's in being interrogated. Something like that, but, yeah, anyway. You know, right after that, he's like, I don't know, he, I don't remember the exact exchange, but he's like not answering the question the way the terrorists want him to. And the, one of the terrorists, like, unfolds a knife, and then, uh, with, with the words, let me rephrase the question. Dude, you, you really don't need a knife to rephrase a question. I, I think there might be a language barrier here somewhere. <laughs> I love how Julianne Moore's character apparently got to what was it to to surveil? I guess is the that that form of the I, I don't know if you can use that as a verb. Anyway, she's been doing surveillance on Chris for two months. I I think that pretty much that's that's the joke. She actually used their, all, all of this, all of these means at, at their disposal to check up on a Las Vegas magician. That is just fantastic. You know, I, I'm thinking that maybe they just don't have enough to do at the, what agency? That wasn't the F B.I., was it? Or was it? Maybe it was. Yeah, that just... You may need to look into those funds there, you know.
Oh, also about Liz, it reminds me, when, you know, when she's asking, why do you need me to put the pill in after two minutes, and, you know, why, why do you need me to apprehend him, I think was her actual words. The, the, uh, Agent Starling, that's what I'm going to go with, Starling asks her, you work for this government-funded school program, right? And again, Beale's like, yes! Like, how did you know? Tell me more! That's, yeah, wow. I do have a few good things to do. There is some of the comedy that actually kind of works. That moment where Chris gets up and Liz, you know, she, he, over and over, he imagines how he would approach her. Excuse me. And it keeps going wrong. And one of them is just him getting up and she just says, no. Just, yeah, that, I think they played that one right and the editing there worked, you know. And then that guy comes to see her, Kendall, I think it is. I don't have much to say about these scenes. I thought it, it I guess, basically made sense that she would not go for the macho thing when he's just like dodging all the punches and stuff. And, you know, and, and he has to take a punch too. But I, I looked him up. It's not Dane Cook, but he looks like Dane Cook. And when he is, you know, getting hurt and embarrassed, I like to think that it is Dane Cook. Yeah, that's, that's it. I suppose that might more or less cover it. Yeah, I suppose so. Please rate and comment, and hey, if you like this video, that subscribe button's just waiting for you to click it.